So here's some running tips for beginners, so people just getting into running, because this is something I've recently gone through. Tip number one would be make sure to get some quality running shoes, some shoes that serve you well, that work for you. I'd recommend spending a bit more if possible to get good quality shoes and shoes that support you well. But ultimately just get whatever you can afford and whatever makes you want to run. Something that you look at and goes, hey, these are my running shoes. These shoes are going to accompany me on my runs and on my adventures. And they are comfortable. They support my feet well. Make sure to get the right size. Make sure to try them out if possible to see if they feel good. It's all about feeling good, feeling supported and feeling comfortable. So for me, these shoes have been amazing. They're more like trail shoes, but I'm also currently using them to run on the road but I can use them to run anywhere. On sand, on trails, on rocks. I can even swim in them. Recently did the torpedo cape in these shoes and they've served me very, very well. So, so that tip is get some good running shoes. Tip number two is get some good workout gear. And this is similar to the running shoes, but this is whatever you feel comfortable in, whatever works for you, whatever is light on your body. For me, this was getting some running shorts and also having a good supply of t-shirts that I can wear for running and whatever else you need but you don't really need much you know you just want to the basics obviously your underwear you know either some pants some running pants or some tights or whatever and then a shirt to wear keep it simple but find the stuff that is designed for the exercise that obviously fits into your budget and also that you enjoy wearing you want to put on your gear and you want to feel like you're ready for the task ahead and you want to feel good and you want to feel supported again you don't have to break the bank to get this you can get you know generic brands but it's nice getting something that's light and that dries quickly and that feels good on your body that's tip number two is get some clothing that is specifically dedicated to your running habit my next tip or insight is that you are gonna feel pains while running while running here this morning, I felt pain in my lower back. Initially, when I started, I felt pain in my left knee, in my right knee. My left calf was a little bit tight. And I think the key tip and insight here is don't panic. There are going to be times where you're going to feel pain and it's going to be fine. It's not an injury. You don't have to immediately stop running. You haven't caused irreparable damage, but you're going to be putting your body through discomfort to a certain level. Obviously, if there's something that's extremely painful or an acute pain, then you want to make sure to just stop and reevaluate. But you're going to feel uncomfortable and you're going to have pain. That's just one of those things, whether it's swimming or running or doing core exercises, you're going to feel pain and it's going to be fine. Usually if it's a mild or light pain, you can run through it. Just maybe stop, do some stretches, just take it easy, slow down your pace, but don't, there's no need to panic. You haven't caused irreparable damage and just know that you're going to feel pain and that it's probably going to be fine. It's, it's part of the experience and you also get used to that and you will feel reassurance that you'll be fine. Again, obviously, if there's something you're not sure about and it's, it's excruciating pain or acute pain, then always err on the side of caution, slow down, stop, take it easy. But once you get more into it and you feel confident and your body's getting stronger, you can run through some of those smaller niggles and pains and aches. You will definitely have those and that's part of the entire process of exercising, working out and building up stamina and muscle and resilience. So that's tip number three is you're going to have pain, but minor pains are completely fine. Little aches and niggles are fine and you will get used to dealing with those and working through those and recovering and coming back stronger. And often they don't even last very long. Sometimes these niggles or pains, they're just very temporary and then, then they're gone again. So keep that in mind. Tip number four is find yourself support in form of other humans. So this is join a, a group, join an exercise group, join a running group, join a swimming group, or find yourself a specific friend, a buddy, a running buddy, a swimming buddy, somebody that is on the same journey as you, someone that's equally excited and committed and passionate about this habit so that you can regularly meet up with this individual or this group of individuals to enjoy the exercise and to build a routine around doing the exercise together and enjoying it together and also holding each other accountable and supporting each other. So that's tip number four. Join an exercise group, join a running group, a swimming group, or find an exercise buddy or friend or family member. Find somebody you can exercise with regularly, someone that will hold you accountable, support you, be in touch with you about your habit. Together you'll work towards a goal and you'll feel that support and that accountability and that has been huge for me to build these habits. Tip number five 
this tip is find what works for you. So we're all different, we all enjoy different things, we enjoy different environments, we enjoy different forms of activities and hobbies and, and exercise. So for me it's been swimming and now I've developed a passion for running and I want to continue exploring other options. But find what works for you, whether it's swimming or running, and then within that form of exercise find out where you enjoy swimming, where you enjoy running. Just explore and find out what works for you because we're all different. So do you enjoy running outdoors? Do you enjoy running on a track? Do you enjoy running on trails? Do you enjoy running on the mountain? Do you enjoy running on the beach? Do you? There's so many different options. Do you enjoy running on the roads? Explore what works for you and stick to that. And then also don't be afraid to explore different options and to put yourself out there a bit and see you know, there might be something that you've never tried before but that you really enjoy. And once you've identified something that you enjoy and that works for you, stick to that and just focus on that. For me, I really love running outdoors. I'm very inspired by the by nature and the outdoor environment. So I love running on trails as long as it's safe, but I also love running on the road. I enjoy running through parks. I like exploring while I run and um, that has generally worked well for me. And I also obviously like boulder hopping, I like running over beaches, I like running along trails. Pretty much what I did for the Torpedo Cape, that's what I really enjoy. Just figure out what works for you, what you enjoy, and then double down on that and don't try and overcomplicate it. Tip number six. So this tip is commit to yourself to developing a specific habit and put it in your diary and track your progress. So for me, I decide what I wanna do. I wanna swim two to three times a week or four times a week, or I wanna run once or twice a week or three times a week, I diarize it, so I put it into my digital calendar. It shows up on my watch as something I need to do, and then I get it done. And for a while also, I was tracking my progress. So I had a sheet where I would always mark off how many swims I've done and how many runs I've done for a specific week and for a specific month even. That was very useful and it's highly recommended. So commit to the habit, so make that commitment to yourself, and then document your plan so create some kind of a schedule some kind of a plan and then track that plan and see how you're doing and if you're not doing well ask yourself what's happening why aren't you you know sticking to your plan and you can then identify what's holding you back but it worked really well for me for the swimming I joined a swimming group and we swim twice a week at the beach and I have that in my calendar then every other week we do a weekend swim so on a Saturday so those were my swims on top of that I started committing to kind of pool squad sessions where where I went for additional swims which again is all through a group and, and this is something I, I paid to join so there was a bit of you know accountability there so I, I've paid the membership fee so I, I want to show up I want to make use of that membership but I had it in my calendar it was part of my plan and similarly when I was recently training for the Torpedo Cape I set up a plan that I needed to follow made up of runs and swims and to the best of my ability I stuck to that plan and I was tracking my progress. So this tip is commit to yourself to this new habit you're forming, come up with a plan, it doesn't have to be complicated, a simple plan, put it into your calendar, diarize for it, plan around it so that you don't miss these commitments. Again, better if you can do it with a buddy or with a group, that always helps with accountability. And then track your progress. You can look back on the weeks and the months and see how, how well have I done, like how many runs have I done this week and also track the distance that you do when it comes to runs and swims. You can track how far you swam, how far you ran, and, and that makes you feel good because you can look back and say, damn it, I, I hit this goal and I'm very proud of myself and this is becoming a new habit. Tip number six, this might not work for everyone, but it has worked for me, and that is come up with some kind of a appealing reward for yourself that you give yourself once you've completed your specific goal. So I used this on two occasions, but the most recent example of how I've used this was, I remember Apple announced the Apple Watch Ultra. So this is the Apple Watch Ultra. It was a watch that I really, really wanted to buy for myself. And it was gonna be a reward that I was gonna purchase for myself for completing something big. And that something big was the Torpedo Cape. That was the run swim event that I recently completed in November. It's a 16 kilometer run swim, so 12 kilometer run and four kilometer swim. And it's alternating, so you run in a wetsuit and you swim in your shoes and it's amazing. So I recently completed the Torpedo Cape and my reward for completing that challenge was to own the Apple Watch Ultra. Now usually what I would do is I would obviously finish the goal and then reward myself with the prize that I've essentially allocated to that goal. But in this case, because I've done this previously, I actually bought the watch before I completed the goal, but I bought it as a supportive piece of gear. And I used this watch to obviously track my swims, track my runs. I had a, another Apple Watch before this one, 
but I purchased myself this item to accompany me on the journey and to help me achieve this goal. So it was almost, it was a prize that I gave myself earlier, knowing that I was going to achieve this goal. And maybe that's not always ideal if you're doing this for the first time, but for me it worked and it worked really well. And every time I look at this watch, I think of the torpedo cape, I think of what I've achieved and I strap it on and I go for a run or I go for a swim. So it helped me a lot and it was something I regularly looked at. I looked at this watch regularly on my wrist and I told myself, you bought this for yourself to spend more time outdoors, do more exercise, be more adventurous. So it actually helped and it, it held me accountable to complete that goal. And it continues to support me in a lifestyle that is focusing on outdoor lifestyle, adventure, fitness and health. Other times I reward myself with smaller prizes like this morning I blended up my smoothie before we had load shedding so it's currently in the fridge and that's something I'm looking forward to as soon as I get home from this run but I, when I made that smoothie and I put it in the fridge I told myself as soon as you complete your run and your core exercise this morning you can come home and enjoy the smoothie. Something really small, I love drinking my smoothie in the morning and today that was a little prize that I created for myself to help me complete this run and this exercise session. In the past I've also done it with, with gaming, so I do like playing PlayStation occasionally. So I'll tell myself if you complete these three runs or three swims this week, then you can have a session of gaming or you can watch the football that's going to be on on the weekend. It's really helped me, you know, but the key is to obviously hold yourself accountable to what you've promised that you'll do. So you can't then still have the smoothie if you didn't finish your run or you can't, you know, watch the football if you didn't do the swims that you wanted to do for that week. So yeah. So that's my tip and that has worked really well for me. This is tip number seven. So for this tip, my recommendation is to get some form of activity and fitness tracker. So I really love Apple. I'm in the Apple ecosystem and I've for a long time owned an Apple Watch. I recently bought myself the Apple Watch Ultra. You don't have to use an Apple Watch. You can use anything. You can use a Garmin, you can use a Fitbit, whatever fits your preference and your budget. Get whatever works for you, but get something that works well for you. Something that can help you track your runs. And I've also used my Apple Watch to track my swims, but whenever I exercise, I track my progress and it's almost gamified the whole experience of exercising and, and it helps me enjoy it more. And my fitness tracker has become my trusty companion that I have on my wrist. It's there for me. I activate it when I start a swim or start a run. It helps me during the run. It tells me how fast I'm running. It shows me how far I'm running. It adds it to a very cool map afterwards, which I can study. So yeah, it just makes it all a little bit more fun, but it also provides some kind of support and accountability. And it gives you that data while you are exercising, which is also very helpful to see how far you're running, what your heart rate is, all of that. So find what works for you, what fits your preference and your budget. And another thing, I often look at my watch and I'm like, okay, I need to get out there, I need to exercise. You know, you also on, in the Apple ecosystem, you, you have, you know, the software kind of pings you and then you, you know, it's all about closing your rings. And it has helped me, I, I won't lie. I often look at my rings and I'm like, yeah, I did well today. I did a workout, or I did multiple workouts. I've, you know, burned my calories for today and I've, I haven't spent too much time sitting. So that's helped a lot. So this tip is get yourself a fitness tracker that works for you and use it regularly, learn how to use it and use it to empower yourself to enjoy your exercise and do more exercise. It's actually quite cool. For a while I'll be doing pull-ups like that, so with my feet on the floor, just assisted pull-ups. This is a very cool little outdoor gym in this park. I'm just not sure if I'm gonna use too much of this equipment for these specific exercises. I might just use this location to do my exercise routine, mostly on the floor. Tip number eight. So I forgot to mention this tip, but this tip is 
run or swim with music if that's something you're into if it helps you for me i'm currently wearing the airpods pro my song playlist is downloaded onto my watch so i don't need a phone or anything but it helps me a lot to run with music and i've also used it for swimming i got myself a waterproof mp3 player that i started swimming with when i did lap swimming and it helped me tremendously so this might not be for everyone but if music gets you motivated and amped and pumped then pipe some tunes into your ears while doing exercise it definitely helps me and it might help you to enjoy your workout sessions more and also run faster run further run longer all of those things so that's tip number eight